All right, welcome everyone. We are going to do a prep exercise for graded assignment number six, Orbit Report. As you can see, I've got the instructions up here on the screen and we can just kind of look at this for a second. Basically, you're gonna be using Angular to create a dynamic experience for your user um, where a table will be displayed um, from some data that you're gonna fetch and uh, the user will be able to search um, and you know that will kind of control what shows up here. Um, they'll be able to sort by name and type um, and then down here there'll be a count of um, all the different types of satellites um, that are here. So they kind of walk you through everything. So this might seem a little bit intimidating, but they really do help you. They give you a lot of code. They tell you exactly where to put it. They give you a lot of syntax um, because you, you're learning a lot really, really fast here. Um, but this really does, will give you a, a good um, bit of practice on the fundamentals of Angular. Um, there's certainly way more to learn, but um, this is a very good start. So. You can you know, take your time, read through this, make sure you understand where you're headed on everything, um, and then just take it a section at a time. And then for fun, there are some uh, bonus things way down here, yep, um, that you can do once you kind of got a handle on everything else. So I will uh, leave all of that to you. Um, so let's move on to what we're gonna do today. We've got the Chattanooga Airport website up, right? So, this is the flight status page and they have their arrivals and departure boards side by side here. You can see, you know, you've got a flight number, what city it's originating in or over here, it would be a destination. Uh, what time, um, in this case, what time it's arriving or what time it's departing. And then um, <laughs> that I believe, I have to make this wider, I guess, to see everything. Okay, yeah. Um, for this one, it's got ba baggage claim. For this one, it's got gate. Um, and then it has a status, you know, has it arrived? Has it departed? Um, is it, uh, you know, delayed? And so it's, you know, good information. Um, they also have, you know, a little map over here. We're not going to worry about that. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to create our own version of this. It'll be a little bit simpler visually. Um, but we're going to focus on these boards. We're going to have some data on these flights. Um, and we're going to be able to search them by uh, the, the airline, the flight number, the city, and um, the status. And the only real difference um, that we're gonna do is to practice what it's like to change what the view is on the page and have only one thing visible while the other one's hidden. So what we're gonna do is have it where you can look at arrivals or you can look at departures, but you, you won't have them side by side like this. Um, it'll be a little bit cleaner. Everything will be easier to read. Um, so that's where we're headed, just so you understand. Um, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is to go to um, this repository. And I will of course have this linked for you guys in my list of exercises um, called you know, A6 Prep Chattanooga Airport. And right now you can see it's on my, my account. So you go here, you come up here and you fork it, and then it'll take you to a page where you see the same project name, but it should be your account. Once you're there, you'll go down here to code and you'll click on this clipboard to make a copy of the um, link to your repository. So it'll look like this, except for your username will be right there. Copy that and then pull up a terminal and then you'll need to navigate to um, where it is that you want to uh, clone this thing. Um, and you can see right now, I've got a whole bunch of different things. I already have it cloned, um, but if you actually were to do the, you know, get clone and then um, <laughs> that is not the right thing. I guess I didn't copy that right. Hang on just a second, hold please. Okay, let's go back to here. Yeah, let me grab that. All right, now it says it's copied. I must not have clicked it. And uh, <laughs> I got lost. Terminal, here we are. So like this, um, then it will create this right where you see it now, right alongside all of these other projects. It's important to make sure that you put it in a folder that doesn't already have 
its own repo. Um, each of these projects has a repository. And as long as you put them side by side like this, then you won't have any problems with one repository interfering with another. Okay, so once you've done that, you've got it there. Then what you can do is um, actually bring up VS Code um, or whatever IDE you are using. And you can see here, I've just got the welcome screen. So I'm gonna go to open folder and then I'm gonna find um, that folder where, <laughs> these are not in order. There you go. And now I can see that I've got this, um, you know, A6 prep uh, Chattanooga airport that was just cloned. So that's where my repo lives. So I wanna select that, but not go inside of it. And then go over here and say open. And now you'll see that I've got the contents of this repository. It has um, a data folder, an images folder, starter code. You're gonna be moving a lot of things um, like these two in, into your Angular project, but the Angular project has not been created yet. That's kind of next on our list here. So um, we need to open a terminal. I find it's easy to open one right here. There's a number of ways you can do that. You can um, come up here to terminal and say new terminal, or you can, um, use uh, command J or control J if you're on Windows and it'll bring it right up and bonus, it brings it up in the folder that you opened. So we are right where we wanna be because we wanna be inside A6 prep in order to create the Angular project. So let's get started with that. We are going to say ng new and then we're gonna give it a name of flight status board there we go. And you should be able to watch and see, uh, <laughs> it's asking me lots of questions. No, I do not want to add routing for this project. Thanks. I do want CSS. And, um, oh boy, we're having dependency issues. Fun. Okay, so I got the Jasmine dependency issue fixed and I will show you what I did. I went um, to Google and I copied in part of the error message I had been getting and it came up with several choices. I went into this um, Stack Overflow article because it seemed to be exactly what I was looking for. It's this, you know, same message. So, um, and you can even see, you know, the user kind of provided that um, the, the poster, I mean, the, the person who asked a question. And um, the first person who gave an answer and lots and lots of people said they thought this was a great answer, just said to go into package.json in the dependencies and change the versions of Jasmine Core and Karma Jasmine HTML Reporter. So I did that. I went over here and opened up uh, package.json. You can find that right down here. Um, and uh, then I, you know, kind of scrolled down until I found the dependencies. And here um, I found Jasmine Core and changed it to 3.7 from 3.6.0. And then uh, here I changed Karma to 1.6 instead of 1.5. So um, I then went ahead and tried um, npm install again. I got a bunch of warnings, which is actually pretty normal. And it said there were some vulnerabilities, which is also normal. Don't let that stuff scare you off. What really matters is whether your, your project will compile or not. So I went ahead and did an ng serve to see if it would and boom, I am good. And, and the project is now compiled. So we can open up um, our, I'm gonna close this. We can open up a, browser tab here and go to localhost 4200. That is where um, Angular applications are served. And you can see this is that default, um, you know, kind of content that I was talking about that exists over in um, the, a, a brand new project that comes from Angular. So um, we've got it running and we're ready to kind of start customizing it the way we want. So the first thing we're gonna do is to go over into this and take all of this out. Or just go, oh, yeah, we're gonna delete everything from app component HTML. We're also going to delete everything from um, this because I've got uh, my own version of it with some 
a link to Google fonts and such. Um, so if you come up, um, remember that outside the flight status board project, I have these extra folders and one of these is starter code. So if we come up here, um, I've got a file that has exactly everything you want for your index. So I'm going to copy it from there, paste it into here, and then I'll close this. Same thing with um, the code for styles. I'm going to, you can grab all of this, um, all of the CSS and take it over to the um, styles dot CSS, which is right down here, and then um, move that in. And then um, in the app component HTML, we will also have, let's see, app component HTML. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna grab this and take it to this file and paste it in. So now we have um, everything we need in order to get started. And you can kind of see I've got, um, you know, a, a whole div that encompasses everything. And remember that where this is really, you know, coming from in the, uh, the index.html inside the body, we simply have app root. And that is the selector that means app component. Um, and so, it basically everything that is here is represented by that, right? So we can just start out with a with a div and go straight from there. You definitely do not want to like have all of the HTML and header and um, or so, I'm sorry, head and body and all those things again, because remember they're here, they exist, and all you're doing now is working on the code that this is standing in for. So here, um, I pretty much have everything for you. I've got um, a couple tabs that say arrival and departures. Eventually, we will make these where you can click on them and it will switch back and forth between the two different boards. Um, we're going to have a header component and we are also um, got, got to insert our board component once we create them, but we haven't created them yet. Um, this is also the form uh, where we'll do that filtering um, and uh, we'll get to that almost last. <laughs> um, we got a lot of uh, content to add first and just get the, the basics up and running. So if you go over to the page, you can kind of see there's not really anything to look at yet because um, we haven't placed the main uh, components that are going to fill out the page. And that's those, you know, header and board um, components that I was talking about. So before um, I do anything else, um, I'm going to make a commit because every time I, I do some substantial stuff here, and we definitely did some substantial stuff here because we have a whole Angular application that needs to be committed. So I'm going to um, split this into a second uh, bash thing so I can get to my prompt. You can also use your terminal as long as you it's easy for you to just kind of switch back and forth. I tend to like to have everything really handy right here. And as long as things stay compiled, I can just kind of keep that off to the side, but now I have my prompt as I need it. Um, so uh, let's get this going. And I know it looks a little funny. It's because it's like not white enough. You know what? Let me fix that. I'm going to make this a little bigger. Okay, yeah, that's better. And I'm just gonna say clear. There we go. Okay, um, and by so now we want to make that commit and we're going to first do get status. Um, it tells us that the branch is up to date with origin main. Um, we've got changes that are not staged and that is uh, the readme file. And then we have some untracked files and that's the stuff that we just moved inside the project. Um, oh, apologies. No, some of these have not been moved inside. They exist outside. So they uh, may or may not be included in this. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Um, get add, and I'm gonna use dot to include everything. And then we'll um, do get status again to see what's here. And you can see all of these files that belong to um, the project. And yes, it does have the ones that exist out next to the Angular project since they're still inside the A6 prep Chattanooga airport repository. Um, so everything's good to go. 
and we should go ahead and commit them. So I'm gonna do git commit and put my message in dash M and then just say um, created new Angular project, um, replaced default code. Uh, and then did I do anything else really? Not yet, that's good for now, okay. Um, so we'll go ahead and just um, close that quote there and add that. And if I do get status again, um, we will see that everything is clean. Nothing to commit, working tree clean. So we're, we're good to move on. And um, now we can get to the exciting stuff. So the first thing we'll do, and I, I put away my terminal too soon, <laughs> is to create um, some, a class and some components. We are going to need a class, and I think that actually um, it would be helpful for me to show you this data. So let's look at it real quick. Um, you can see here in flights.json, this is where all the information is going to come from. Each object, JSON object, has um, eight properties. Um, you can kind of read through those. And so what we want to do is create a flight class that um, mirrors these um, exactly as they are. And so uh, let's do that. And so we're going to say ng for Angular, g for generate, and then class. And then we will call it flight. And you don't have to worry about whether it's uppercase or lowercase because it will figure that out um, when you get inside here. It ha Angular has its own way of deciding you know, what's capitalized and what's not. And you'll see that in a little bit. Um, okay, so we'll do that. And, oh. I am no longer inside the project. Um, okay, or maybe I just never went inside. So good lesson. <laughs> you can't create something for Angular unless you're actually inside it. Um, and I should have done that immediately and I forgot. So you can remind yourself of what things are um, by looking at this. And um, we're going to change directory into flight status board. Okay, now we are inside the Angular project and we're free to create Angular things. So I'm gonna go back and get what I was working on. All right, NGG class flight. All right. And so you can see here, uh, it created a spec file and a, a regular type script class file. Those just showed up right here. And if we go in, you see there's not a whole lot here. It's, you know, just an empty class. Um, but you can uh, do this because you have been taught how to do TypeScript classes. So let's go ahead and get that started. And the first thing we will do is create all of our properties. We, <laughs> we need airline and that's gonna be a string. Remember with TypeScript, you're typing each of your um, properties and you don't need to, um, wow. You don't actually need to uh, expand or initialize them. You can just declare them um, because this is a class and you really um, are just setting things up so that you can use them in the constructor. Evidently, I cannot talk and type at the same time. All right, um, so you get where I'm going with this. I am going to save us some time <laughs> and copy and paste the rest of these in. All right, um, next is the constructor. Straightforward, just use constructor and um, get started there. Now, what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. There we go, okay. So this is the constructor. In here, we're gonna have our parameters and then inside here, we're going to um, make it so that we can set those properties for any object that is created from a flight class. So. Um, this is very similar to JavaScript, um, but you have to actually show the types in the, with the parameters. So, and we're only going to do the first six classes. We're going to leave gate and status out of it because you can probably imagine that in real life, um, this is the information that would be, you know, known. But the things like gate and status are, you know, kind of last minute. You would you would update them later. So, I kind of chose to do that, and. So we've got airline as it's, and everything's a string, you'll notice. Um, they, it doesn't have to be, it just is. Um, and so inside, we're going to want to list those out. 
and the last two properties, instead of just setting them so that the property that belongs to the class um, gets the value of whatever parameter is put in when you first create an instance of the class. Um, down here, gate is just going to be an empty string and, and status will be an empty string for now. Um, and then you can update them later um, as we're pulling in the JSON. So that's it for now. Later on, we're going to have some, um, we can kind of sit and have a to do here to add some methods, which we'll do in a little bit. Um, the next thing we want to do now that we've got um, this class taken care of is to move on and create a couple of components. So you remember that when we were looking in the app component, we um, let me get this where I can see it. <laughs> Zoom always gets in the way. Okay. Um, we have, you know, insert a header component and insert two instances of the board component. So we got to create those. We'll go back down to our terminal. And um, I'm sorry, this is so messy. It's um, being funny on me here. Yeah. Because the path is so long. Okay. Um, we are going to do ng and g again for um, for generate, and then c just means component. So ng g c is um, ng generate component, and then give it a name. And the first one, of course, is just header. So we'll let it. Oh, I didn't have a space. My bad. <laughs> there we go. And you can see it created all four files and it updated that app module file. We'll take a look at that in just a second, but it did a lot of work for you behind the scenes. We'll do it again. And this time uh, NGGC and we'll do board for our other component. There again, created everything. And you just see that you're seeing them pop up right over here, right? So we can look at that. Um, board has its four files, header has its four files. And it is always going to um, automatically create a spec file for Jasmine, uh, which you can add to if you want to you know, play around with adding some unit tests. Um, you also can choose to not have them and you there's actually a way to do, um, I think there's like a flag you can put on this to have it um, omit them when it creates it and then it'll just create the three files. Okay, let's go over to app module here. You see it's turned yellow because um, it updated it. Um, and you can see it imported the header component, imported the board component, and it also placed them right here in the declarations. So you don't have to go in and manually do those as long as you create your components through um, the, the command line right here. Okay, good. We are doing uh, well here. We've got, um, I think, everything we need. And then uh, I think the last thing we're going to do is actually place those in the app component. So let's go down to um, the app component HTML. And now that we know what, what these are, and you, if you forget what selector you're supposed to use here, you can just go into the TypeScript file and see right there that the selector is app board. Um, generally speaking, it's any, it's going to default to putting app in front of everything, and then it'll just have the name of whatever your component was. And then you can see this is where it links to the HTML file, and this is where it links to the CSS file, so that everything can work um, together in this one component. And that's that's kind of the core of um, com component-based um, design, and uh, that's what Angular is famous for. Um, so we are going to go back over to app now that we know what it is and let's replace this and oops not all of that <laughs> just this and we will say at board and leave it like that i'm sorry that's supposed to be header isn't it okay and then down here we will add at board and another oh i see what i did i don't have a closing tag okay there we go. And then we'll have uh, another app board. So I can just copy that and put it right next to it. And eventually one of these is gonna be for arrivals, one will be for departures, and we will um, you know, make it so that only one will show at a time. And we also will have a way to differentiate which flights get sent to which of these boards. So with that, I believe, um, let's see. 
do we have some HTML to put into our boards? I think we, I think we do. Okay. So before we uh, do another commit, let's go um, over to our, let's see, I'm going to keep this simple up here. Let's go over into our board. Um, I'm sorry. Here we go. Code for the <laughs> header component. There it is. We're just going to grab this. You'll notice this is very straightforward. Really, all we're doing is we have a header background and we're putting the letter CHA, which of course is the code for the Chattanooga Airport, um, right there at the top. So we'll come back up into our project and go over to the um, header component and take out the default header works and replace it with our code. The same thing here for um, the code for the board component. I've got some things set up for you already here. So you can grab this and copy it and then come up here to board component HTML and replace this default code. And you'll notice here, just so you can kind of get your bearings, um, we have a table row. Um, that's what the TR stands for. And each of these um, TH elements is, uh, stands for table header cell. And we have columns essentially for airline, flight, city, time, gate, and status. Um, what we're going to do is create another um, set of table rows, but we only have to do it once because we're going to loop through and use the um, MG4 directive to have it create multiple instances of that TR with new data in each one once we have our data. Um, so we'll be moving on to that pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and make another commit now that we've done this because we've got quite a few things we just did. So let's see, we um, wanna do a get status to see what we got, good. So you can see we updated things in app component and um, app module got updated because of the new components. And here's where um, you can see the, the files and directories that have been added. So let's do um, get add dots to make sure everything from both of these categories, um, tracked and untracked, is added. And then um, we'll do get status again. And now everything's staged and ready to go. So get commit. Okay, by the way, guys, if you see me using these um, shortcuts, uh, GC, that's something I have set up just on my computer. Um, and I'm using them out of habit. So I will try to remember not to do. So get commit and then message. And then we're gonna say we uh, created flight class, created uh, header and board components and um, added or okay, replaced um, default HTML. And components. Okay, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, oh, we also well created flight classes and we created we added all the constructor stuff too, but that's okay. You don't have to be terribly specific on this, just enough to where if you go and look at a, a list of your commits, you really have a good handle on what happened where. Um, it makes it easier for you to go and look at things um, as a snapshot of where they were at that commit if you need to. Okay, so we've got that committed. Um, Next, we are going ahead and working on getting these uh, flights um, created and stored locally from your JSON. And you can imagine that you, uh, you know, this data that we've got up here um, is actually off, you know, in some server somewhere, and you're actually going to go get it through an API. So we're doing the same process. It's just we're going to have to use a local. Um, path instead of a UR, you know, like a full URL um, to do our fetch, but it's the same concept. Okay, so we'll go to app, and the first thing we need to do is to have somewhere to put it, right? So we are going to create, and I need to get this, uh, yeah, I'm not going to use that, which means, um, Oh no, we, we replaced that, right? So I think, let me go ahead and check. Let's go over to the index and just double check. Yeah, so I set up a custom title here and when you guys, um, you know, paste this in from the starter code, you'll have it. Okay, 
So I'm going to come in here and uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a couple of things. And I want to double check my solution over here and make sure I've got everything. Um, we are going to want a constructor for this. So I'm going to go ahead and create that here. Um, we will put something in it in a minute. Um, but for now, let's keep this opened up a little bit. Uh, what we really are interested in is making sure that we have arrays for our arrivals and our departures. So I want to make these arrays of flight objects. Um, and notice as I'm typing this, it's kind of popping up and suggesting that I might want to import that. So if I hit uh, tab when it's got the right one selected, and of course right now it's the only one, it will go ahead and add that at the top and you see it did it right there. Um, and so all I have to do now is say that this is of type, um, it's an array of type flight. And then I can set that equal to an empty array for now because we haven't added anything to it yet. We're gonna, we're gonna push all that JSON in there, all, each of those objects, once we uh, create the you know, local version of them with our flight class. And then same thing here for departures. It's going to be an array of flight class, <laughs> flight class objects, and this is well, where we will store them. So let's go ahead and work on uh, getting this JSON. What we're going to want to do is write a, uh, we don't want to start the fetch um, right away. We want to create a function that is going to have the fetch inside of it. And then we will call it um, from a particular location. In fact, let's do that now. Right up here in the constructor, we're going to call get flights. And the reason, and it has to be this dot get flights, which of course VS Code uh, changed for me. Um, and basically that just uh, means that it'll make sure that it happens first um, so that, that all the data is there before the rest of your code starts um, using that data. Because otherwise you'll have errors because uh, it's trying to do things and the data just isn't there yet. Because um, as you may remember, fetch is asynchronous um, and you have no control over how long it's going to take to to get the data back. So you have to kind of do things in a certain order. Okay. Um, by the way, uh, this void just means uh, you know I'm giving the the return type of the of the entire function um, a type, but in this case, void means there is no return value. It's just a function that's going to do some things. So let's get this fetch going. And for the sake of time, I'm going to copy it in, but we'll talk about it. All right. So as, as I mentioned before, um, we're not using a URL to get this from a, like a public API or anything. We're actually just getting it with a local path. So this is assets slash data. Ooh, that reminds me. Our data folder is not currently at assets, is it? Because the Angular project did not um, exist. And, <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm, I'm getting distracted, but I need to change this because I need to change all of this. That's just gonna have to, have to happen later. Getting ahead of myself. Later on, we'll have that we'll deal with the filtered, um, filtered arrivals, okay. So right now uh, I was planning on showing you how to do this. Okay, so if you come down here and, oh no, I guess it's at the top because alphabetically it's, um, yeah, data, I knew that. All right, um, you're gonna just wanna drag this folder so that it's inside the flight status board and very specifically, we want it to be inside the assets folder. So I'm just gonna drop it and drop it right there, confirm that I wanna move it. And now you can see that the data folder with the JSON is inside the assets folder. While we're at it, because later on we're going to need some uh, images, um, let's go ahead and move the images as well, which are down here. So same thing, I'm just gonna drag and drop. And there's the images right alongside the data. Um, we have several images here. Oh, and now that we've done that, look what happens to our page. We have a background, we have a header, and we've got um, our little search thing, and we even have our tabs and then our 
the, you know, the start of our boards, because remember those header rows already exist. We just haven't done the uh, data rows yet. So we'll get to that. And we also are seeing both of them because we haven't um, put anything in that's gonna help us like show only one of them at a time, but we'll get there. Okay, so exciting to see things moving along. Let's talk about this, uh, this JSON. So basically what's happening here is uh, it's going and saying, hey, I need to get some data from you. Know, from you. And so this little middle guy here says, okay, hang on, I'll be right back. And then it goes and finds it. And once it brings it back, um, we have this uh, JSON that we now can use uh, as a parameter um, of, of this little anonymous function right here. And this is a, um, a, a arrow function or a fat arrow function. That's um, just another syntax of JavaScript that allows you to um, use a parameter and then put some stuff in brackets where you can use it. So now that we have it, we can use that. And that of course is an array. If you remember the data is always um, in this case in an array of objects. So we wanna treat that like an array and uh, go ahead and do a for each, which is um, a function that allows you to do another anonymous function and then interact with each object one at a time. So this is kind of like doing a for loop. Um, it just is a kind of a shorthand way of doing it. And you don't have to use uh, like something like I as an iterator, you can just use this term flight. And flight here is going to re refer to um, each flight object. Um, so we're gonna create our own flight object that is based on our flight class that we already created. And so what we're gonna do is say, let new flight equal new um, flight class object. That's what that means. And then this is of course, is what you established in the constructor. Um, you wanna have, and you can kinda, if you, yeah, if you hover over this, notice that it shows you up there um, what each of the parameters are, airline, string, flight number, string. Um, and so we want to give those specific values to pass in this constructor to create this flight object. So we'll use um, flight.airline, and that refers to the JSON flight uh, object, right? Um, we're going over and using, um, you know, its properties to instantiate uh, our, our new object. And you know, the one way we can actually prove this is that we're calling our property on flight number, we're calling it flight NO for short, you know, number. And then the original JSON actually has flight number spelled out. So um, if you forget how that works, you can come back and look at this and then you know just look at this JSON again. And you can see right there, there's the flight number. So we're referring to these properties when we um, say, you know, flight dot property. So we'll take those first six and put them in. And then of course we need to also add the information for um, new flight dot gate and new flight dot status since those were not part of the um, constructor parameters. Once that's done, um, we can decide where they need to go. So the first thing is to um, you know, think about the fact that you're going to need to push them into these arrays that we created right here that are already set up to accept flight objects. Um, and which one you do um, is just gonna depend on uh, whether it's an arrival or a destination. The way you can tell that is because in our data, um, if a destination says Chattanooga, then that's a plane that's coming in, which means it's an arrival. If the origin says Chattanooga, well, let's go back over and look at that. Um, yeah, here you go. If the origin says um, Chattanooga, then obviously it's going to be a departure. So this is kind of the basis on which we're establishing this logic to go ahead and um, assign each new flight that we create on each loop, remember the for each creates a loop, um, and each one, it'll put it in the right place as it goes through. And when we get done, we should have, I think 50, oh no, 35, I think different flights. Um, and we will be able to see that in a minute. In fact, if we wanted to see it right now, right after this fetch, we could say, um, actually, we would probably wanna do it here. Um, 
console.log and let's just say um, all arrivals dot uh, length. And you'll notice it's giving me grief because I did not use this. And you have to refer to this you know, property that's global right here to your, your class. Remember that components are also classes. They're just a special type, type of class that you know has all this extra communication and allows you to um, set up a lot of functionality for each for each component okay um, so let's do that and then we'll go over here and open up our console and let's take a look at the javascript console here yeah and you can see right there that when the page loaded and it went and got the json that it logged here that there's 17 arrival flights um, so uh, we absolutely um, have what we're looking for. You could also uh, console log the JSON itself, as long as you're um, inside this part right here. So let's go over and try that. And there, there you see every single object, all 35 of them. You can open them up, you know, look at them, make sure everything's as you expect. And sure enough, you've got, you know, all of the uh, different properties. And you'll notice they're not necessarily in the same order, but they're all there. And that's normal um, because objects are not index based, they are property based. Um, so it doesn't matter what order then it'll always know how to get the right value for the right property. All right, um, let's move back over to our code. We know we've got our JSON. So what do we need to do next? We need to um, make a commit is what we need to do because that was you know, quite a bit of work and we wanna make sure that we've got it saved in um, all on its own. So let's do um, a get status to make sure we've got what we're expecting. Um, you'll notice that it says here that this has been deleted and all these images have been deleted. And then down here, it's notice, noticing that this is uh, untracked and that's normal. Um, just when it first pre, uh, presents it. But as long as you add everything, it'll sort it out. We'll see that in a second. Um, and then of course, app component was modified because we just added all this code. Okay, let's do um, git add dots. And now we'll do that git status again. And you'll see, hmm, <laughs> it made a liar out of me guys, but that's okay. Um, like I said earlier, sometimes it has a little trouble when you've got things that are actually I'm not I'm not really entirely Oh, I think it's because I am in a folder that is too far back. Uh, because our repository is actually one up. So I'm going to, you know, CD my way back up into a six prep, etc. And let's do this again. Let's try adding it. Um, and you can actually do that. Yeah, there's different ways to do this, but um, now when we do get status, I think we'll see everything. Yeah, and you'll notice now that it says that things were just renamed, and it's just because, uh, and it shows the old path and now the new path that it, they're inside that assets folder. That was what I was expecting to see. Okay, we're gonna see CD back into our um, project folder though to continue to do things um, that are Angular related. Okay. Um, so we have uh, everything uh, all staged. And so we should be able to just do our git commit and say um, we uh, fetched JSON and uh, stored in uh, all arrivals and all departures arrays. OK. And there we have it. Um, Okay, so let's let's move on here. What's next? We want to go ahead and start setting up these data rows so that we can display all of our data. All right, let's switch over to um, the HTML file. Oh, not this HTML file because we're not putting it in here because we are actually going to go get it from this other component, right? So this is where we need to be, board component HTML. Um, what I'm gonna do is copy 
this structure because we really just want to model it after the same. We want to make sure we have the same amount of columns. The difference is we're going to use TD here instead of, in fact, I'm going to just say anywhere you see a TH, I'm going to right click and say uh, change all occurrences. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Okay, my bad, because it'll change all the ones up top too. <laughs> oh, okay, um, TD stands for table data cell, um, just like TH stands for table header cell. So you only wanna use the H once and then you move on and use TD. Now, um, everything inside here, we're obviously gonna change and we won't use that class here. Actually, we might use that class here, but let's see. Um, let me grab my solution here to make sure I'm not leading you astray. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, we're going to keep that. So we need to add, let's, let's add the classes first, um, just to kind of get that out of the way. And then we're going to work on using our structural directive and uh, getting all of the data actually put in that's based on the JSON. So we're going to have um, some stuff here where some of these are going to be bolded. This one I want to not only be bolded, but I'm going to add a second class by putting a space there and just say, uh, actually, I'm going to hold off on that. Huh. <laughs> we'll add that. We'll add that second class later. It's going to be a different, a different part of what we do. Um, okay, so let's do this structural uh, directive. We are going to use ng4 because that's the one that gives us the ability to iterate. And we need to um, establish a local variable right here inside of this TR um, that kind of lets us use a little bit of JavaScript right here in, the, in our HTML. We're going to call it uh, let flight of flights. And I know that probably sounds confusing. Um, but this flights variable, which we need to go create, so we can do that in just a second. Um, it, that's going to represent um, whichever array of flights is passed into the board component. So if it's the arrivals um, component, then it's um, going to bring in the um, all, all arrivals, right? And then we'll just look at each one of those one at a time. Um, if it's departures, same thing. It'll bring in the departures array, and then we'll look at them one at a time. But this way, we're able to make it generic so that we can use this board component for both of them. And that's not something, by, by the way, using the same component twice is not something you need to do for graded assignment six. It's just what worked best for my project. So don't worry about that part. Um, OK. So we're going to have some new text that we're going to put in here. Um, and essentially what we're going to do is use uh, string interpolation. It's um, one of the ways that we do data binding in Angular. And we will say flight dot airline. And then we'll similarly say flight dot, uh, <laughs> what is this one? Um, flight number, that's right, to represent the flight number. OK, and then this one is flight dot o. So we don't have a flight.city, right? Because we don't know yet whether um, we're going to need uh, arrivals or, or departures. We're going to come back to that in a second. Same thing with time, because we don't actually have a you know, generic time um, property. Let's get these ones out of the way, though. Flight, got to remember. Yeah, see, I'm forgetting to do my um, string interpolation, so hang on. What did I even do right there? Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And then we'll get flight.gate. And here we're going to do a flight.status. Okay. Um, so what, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to uh, flip over to the, the board uh, components TypeScript file so that we can create these um, the flights variable that we need and also create another one that is going to help us determine which one of the uh, things we need, whether it's going to be, um, you know, the, the time that comes from the origin or the time that comes from the um, destination. So let's go over here and take a look. We need two things. We'll put them um, below 
these. Um, this is kind of typical for Angular, by the way, that the constructor and, and any any of the kind of life cycle uh, type things are going to go uh, uh, right below that. But then you can declare your properties. And then after that, if you have any methods, you put them down at the bottom. So let's call this flights. And what we're going to make this um, a consistently, we have to make sure that it's an array of flight objects, right? And then um, we will go ahead and set it to an empty object because um, it, it's going to get filled when we go get it from the app component. And then we'll do a second one called type. That's just going to be a string. It's just uh, something that's going to give us a clue on um, which data to choose um, from, our, from our JSON. OK. Um, so here's, here's the deal with this. When you have a parent and a child component, and the way you can tell which one's which is that uh, if you go to your app component, app here is the parent and then it you know we have these placed inside so that makes board and header the children of app so um, when we are wanting to move information from the parent to the child we can actually use this special decorator that is uh, called input and you'll notice already that uh, it's suggesting that i need to import it from angular core so I'm going to do that. And then to finish it off there, I'm going to put some parentheses. And then we'll do it again. Um, so we're going to need to pull both of these in um, because they'll be different for each of the two board components that we use. Um, OK, so we're going to go get those. And then the, on the flip side of that, we need to have an attribute directive to send the right information through um, in the parent component. So we're going to go back over to app component.html. And inside here, we're going to set up our, yeah, we're going to set up our um, attribute directives is what this is called. This is another way of doing data binding. Um, you'll see this used a lot. And we're, we have one for flights. And we're going to set it equal to um, all arrivals for this one. And then for the next one, I'm going to copy it and paste it down in here. Um, we're going to set it equal to all departures. OK. And then we'll do the same thing for type. We're, we're going to um, send it through to that uh, so that that input direct, uh, excuse me, the input dec decorator can pick it up. And this one we're just going to say is um, arrival text, which is another um, variable that does not exist yet, but we'll go create it in just a second. I'm doing things a little bit out of order here, but that's all right. It'll all sort out. Uh, departure text. Okay. And this is um, the w because this string is not really a string, it's actually representing a variable, just like this represents a variable. Um, we're going to have a variable called arrival text that it's going to contain a string called arrival. Now I seem a little convoluted, but it's the way it has to work. So let's go over to app component TS and below here, we will create um, that arrival text. And we're going to just make that a string and set it to arrival. And same thing with departure text. OK, um, now they exist and we know what they are. And you'll, <laughs> you'll notice the page came back. Oh, hey, look at that. We've got our data. We forgot to look at that, didn't we? So you can see that there's the first component and the second component. And there's a rogue bracket. Let's go see what that's about. That's going to be in the app component, I imagine. Yeah, there's an extra little bracket here on the end of each of these. All right, that fixes it. Um, yeah, so we've got our data coming in, um, except for city and time, you'll notice they're still missing because we're still working on those parts. Now that we have um, the flights and the, and the type being sent through, um, we're going to go ahead and go back over to our board component and we can now use that information. So let's, um, let me switch back over. I'm actually just going to 
copy and paste this in for you from my solution and we'll talk about it. Um, sorry, I'm apparently being a little slow on the copying and pasting. Um, yeah, so you can see here, I'm still using string interpolation, but because um, anything inside here is JavaScript, I can actually put a simple expression. And what we have here is called a ternary. You may have seen it before. Um, first, you have some sort of Boolean expression, something that will evaluate to either true or false. Then you have a question mark that basically says, is it true or false? And then this says, if it is true, then we want this data to be flight.origin. But if it's not true, we want this information to be flight.destination. So if it's an arrival, give us the origin city. If it's, um, if it's a departure, then it'll be destination. Um, and then we ask the same question here, but of course for the time, we wanna get the arrival time or the departure time. And I know the words um, arrival and departure are being thrown around a lot, but you can trace it down. Um, actually, that's not what I wanna look at. Um, it's not the JSON, it's our class. Uh, so in our class, remember we have an arrival um, and departure um, properties and those refer to the, and, and I guess we can look at the data just to show you what it refers to. Um, it refers to those times. So now that we go back over to here, we should see that the cities are now, you know, not Chattanooga. They definitely pull from the um, column they're supposed to. In this case, it's um, the origin that they're coming from. And then down here with the departures one, it's the destination that it's going to. Um, all right, let me check my notes here and see if there's anything else that we need to do before we make another commit. I don't think so. I think we actually um, are good for now. And so let's make a commit. All right. First we do our, our get status. We can see what's changed. Um, and those were the four files we were working in. So that looks right. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> add all of them and I'm using my shortcut, sorry guys. Get status, okay. Um, there they are. All right, so we're ready to commit. Commit has two M's, not three. And <laughs> I'm gonna commit with a message um, of, uh, let's see, added, um, oh, you know what? We're not ready to commit and I'm gonna tell you why. We have not actually done the, oh yeah, we did. All right, I'm tripping. Hang on, there we go. Okay, so um, let's say we, we um, added uh, data rows to table and used ng4 to uh, iterate over flight data. Okay. Um, and that pretty much covers it because everything we were doing was in service of that total idea. So we're gonna do that and four files changed and it tells us uh, a little more information there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and um, get get moving on. We've got a couple more things to do here. So really, I think the next thing to do is to go ahead and get these where they are mutually exclusive. We want to be able to put them um, where only one is showing at a time. And kind of the first thing we need uh, for that is some sort of Boolean that's going to keep track of whether something is true or false so it knows which one to show. And I think um, a very simple way to do that uh, would just be to call it um, something like, I need to make sure I'm calling it the same thing I did in my solution, hold on. <laughs> yeah, show arrivals. Okay, we're gonna call this show arrivals um, and it's gonna be a Boolean and we're going to uh, default to true so that it'll always show the arrivals first. Um, and then of course, we'll put some logic in with some click events to change it from you know, true to false and vice versa. Okay, um, so show arrivals uh, is the first thing. And then we also want to go and do the ng if structural directives. 
Um, NGF, similarly to NG4, is uh, specifically called a structural directive, and um, that's something that's good to remember for interviews, as I found out once. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to come over here and we're going to put those directives right here on the board components that are in the app component. Um, and in this case, we want this arrivals one to show if show arrivals is true. And of course, show arrivals is a Boolean, it evaluates to true. So we don't need to like put equals true. That right there is sufficient. So similarly, we can check for the opposite of that and just use a, a bang, you know, exclamation point right there at the front to basically say, show this only if arri show arrivals is false. Um, and already, if we come over here, you can see we only have one board. Um, what we cannot do right now is get to our departures because um, there's no click events in place. So let's do that. We're going to come um, right up here to our tabs and we're going to add some click events. And I need to get that solution open to make sure again that I'm doing it the same way I did here. Hold please. Okay. Yeah. So this is kind of the same thing. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I was thinking it was, I had done something more complicated, but that's actually for later. Um, we're gonna uh, just treat this whole div um, because that's the whole tab and um, put the click event on that rather than like on the words or whatever, um, because then it doesn't matter where they click on the whole tab, it will work. So remember that uh, events are um, indicated in Angular with uh, those parentheses. So we're going to do click equals and then same thing, just show arrivals. This first board is the arrivals board. So um, if that's true, it will show. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is not, in fact, um, the same thing as what we were doing before. Okay, so if we write show arrivals equals true, um, what that will happen is it means that when we click, it's going to change the value of show arrivals and make it true. And then similarly, um, if we put this on the departures tab and change this to false, um, when we click on departures, it should toggle that as well um, back the other direction. So let's try it out. Departures, hey. Arrivals, you see that changing? So our click events are working. Um, it's going and, and you know checking to, uh, to see which one is has just been changed. These control which one has changed and what its value is. Okay. Um, we also um, want to add uh, a style attribute here because You'll notice that these are kind of in, in the gray and it doesn't make it real apparent immediately which one you're on. So let's look at what it means to do a style attribute. We can actually add on something that is a class that exists. So let's go look at that class, um, our, our classes real quick. And I've got them up here in styles CSS. I just put everything in here because it trickles down. So anything that is a child of, um, you know, it, the app root um, will, you know, inherit these styles. So you don't have to have them in the, you know, individual CSS files unless you want them to be available only to this and its children. Um, so having everything up here at the top, um, because it's not super compl complicated, is um, what will work really well for us here. So let's look at this. We've got um, our tabs here, and you'll notice that tab makes the background color white, um, but it's only at 70% opacity. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this conditional so that when the tab is active, it raises that opacity to one and makes it um, just as white and solid as the board is. And then it'll look like it's attached to the board. So let's go over to our HTML in the app component, and we're going to add this in. And you can see there that um, the way to do this is to say class and then dot tab active. That's how Angular knows that you're trying to access a style um, is by calling it a class um, that is specifically this class. 
And you know, this, this binding basically means it'll go and check the TypeScript file to see um, whether this is true or false. And so the only way it's gonna show it is if, um, if that one is true uh, or not. So let's uh, go over here. Yeah, and you can see already that um, arrivals is made, <laughs> um, is made, so we just need to do the same thing. I'm sorry, my cat's distracting me. You're very cute, but you're <laughs> trying to climb on my computer. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's get back over here and add the same thing to our departures. Make sure that it's when um, show arrivals is not true. And now when we go back and forth, you see it updates and it looks a lot better, doesn't it? Okay. Okay, now let's move on to the filtering uh, portion of this application. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we are going to go on over to the application TypeScript file. And we need to add uh, a couple more arrays here because we don't want to lose all of the content that's in here, um, but we need to have something where we can, you know, empty it and fill it with different combinations of, you know, sub subsets of this data. So let's call it filtered arrivals. Again, an array of flight objects and then um, filtered departure. Departures. <laughs> okay. So we got those and then um, we need to go over to our form, which you know is already on the component here. We just haven't really done anything with it yet, right? Um, if you come over here and you try to you know search for Atlanta, um, you know nothing happens because none of this stuff is wired up yet. So let's take care of that. The first thing we want to do is put a template reference var variable on our input. And in this case, we're just gonna use keyword. Now what this does is um, function as an ID. It also functions as a name for that input. And it um, gives you a local variable here that you can use um, right alongside everything else um, that ties to the TypeScript. So um, let's go ahead and uh, add in the methods that we're gonna need here. So we're gonna go over to our starter code folder, which we haven't seen in a while, but let's look. Um, and grab, let's see, app component board. Make sure I'm copying the right thing. Okay, so um, we want, wow, guys, I'm tired. Okay, uh, yeah, here we go. So uh, yeah, I've got some instructions here, but basically what we wanna do is take these, and the only reason they're commented out is because um, it would cause errors to have this in here without it being inside of a class. So what we're gonna do is take it over to the app component and, uh, sorry, the TypeScript file specifically, and right below our flights, but inside the class, this is, this is where the class ends, this is where get flights ends, right? So we're gonna come down here um, and add everything. <laughs> and also get it uh, lined up properly. Oops. Sorry guys, hang on. That's what I meant to do, okay. And then we're gonna uncomment all of it so that we now have nice clean um, things. And basically what's happening here is it's going in um, and we are taking whatever keyword is gonna come in from our input and makes it lowercase so that we don't have to worry about uh, you know, anything um, getting lost in the matching just because of case, right? Um, we're going to start a new array of flight objects that is what we'll temporarily kind of use to store the things that match. And then later on, we will actually um, fill filter arrivals with it. So, um, after that, we're going to loop through the all arrivals thing. And remember, that's this uh, kind of global uh, within the class array right here that holds all of the objects for arrivals. And each one um, 
for ease of use, because you can see that I use it over and over again, I have used a variable to hold this dot or all arrivals at index I. It's a lot cleaner than having to repeat that every single time. So now we have flight that represents um, everything. What I'm doing is taking uh, a new variable to take all of the different things that I wanna be able to check which is the airline, uh, the flight number, the origin and the status, they are all strings. So the easiest thing to do is concatenate them all together, change them to lowercase so that we can make sure we're matching lowercase to lowercase. And then um, we just check to see if within flight info, there is an index greater or equal to zero um, where the keyword exists, then we go into our matching arrivals and push this particular object that we're on for this iteration of the loop. And um, basically the, the reason this works, this index of keyword is because if it doesn't exist, it's gonna return negative one. And so anything zero or greater means it does exist. So we do that and we go through the whole um, list of objects that are in all arrivals. We find the matching ones, we push them into matching arrivals and now this has data in it if there was a match. Then right here, we take the, the filtered arrivals that we just created right here, and we um, fill it with the matching arrivals that we just um, finished here. And this, if you haven't seen it before, is called a spread operator. It basically just says, go inside of matching arrivals, gather all those objects, and then um, place them into this array. So, because you may remember, you can't just um, copy an array by saying, you know, this array equals that array, um, because arrays are stored by location, um, like, like where they are stored in memory. Um, so that would be the reference as to where it's stored in memory. So then you don't actually have two different um, things anymore. You just have a reference to this. So um, in this case, uh, what this will do is actually go get the objects. So same thing here except for with departures. So I've already explained everything. So that's the whole thing. It goes and it gets some, it fills things. You'll notice again, this is a, a void um, type function because there is no return value. We're working um, just to put data inside these variables that exist outside the function. Okay, and this one down here, reset flights, pretty self-explanatory, also void. It just takes it and resets it back to, uh, contain everything that's in all arrivals and all departures. Um, okay. So we are going to add um, this click event and we will go ahead and set it equal to uh, filter flights. That's our function that we just uh, brought over. And remember that filter flights has uh, a parameter. And it's just that keyword. So just like you did in the DOM, uh, you have to remember that these inputs have, uh, you know, hidden properties that the browser, you know, automatically kind of keeps track of. And one of those is value. So whatever value the user has put into the input um, that is stored there. Um, and so the moment the, the submit button is hit, it goes and grabs that value. Um, so we can put, you know, keyword in here because we're referring to this input. This is where we want to get the information from, but we have to make sure to grab the value. Otherwise, um, it's trying to like, you know, grab a whole object and we can't do that. So this will take care of that. And then similarly on the reset button, we're going to do a click event that will go ahead and, sorry, reset flights. And then same thing, um, oh, except that one doesn't have a, a parameter. It just goes and does it. So that's all that's needed there. Okay, I think um, we pretty much have that. We also need to go down here and change things because if you think about it, you know, we might have all of this in place, but right now if we go and we, um, you know, match something uh, and try to submit it, um, we still don't we still don't have anything uh, changing because we're still sending all arrivals and all departures down to these children um, the board <clears throat> excuse me board uh, components 
So now we want flights, which is that variable that exists in the board component to take filtered um, arrivals. And we want this one to take filtered departures. And that way it'll be um, exactly the information we want to display and not um, all of them all of the time. So let's try that out and see. I feel like, oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Here's the other part that we need to do. You'll notice everything disappeared. The reason for that is because when this page loads, um, it's going to load now whatever was here. But right now, we still have uh, the value of filtered arrivals and filtered departures starting out as an empty uh, array. So we need to make sure after we grab all of this JSON that we go ahead and put those in. So let me just grab this real quick and I'm just going to paste it over be faster. All right, so we're taking this dot filtered arrivals up here and we're going to use that same spread operator you saw before um, to take all arrivals and fill up uh, filtered arrivals and then do the same for the departures. And now once we've done, we have everything stored in all arrivals, all, all departures and we have the same information stored and filtered um, and departures so that all of them will load and they are. But if our uh, if we've done our click events right now, we should be able to, and I'm gonna do lowercase on purpose, Atlanta, and say get flights and hey, we got all the Atlanta flights. Now, because we have sent that information and we sent both the filtered arrivals and the filtered departures at the same time, I can switch over here and it shows me just Atlanta for departures as well, because it's holding those values and filter uh, filtered um, until I do another search or until I reset. If I reset, it goes back to all of them. And um, you'll notice it didn't refresh the page. We're still on departures. Um, this is you know a single page application. This is so one of the things that's so great about something like um, like Angular is making it really easy to keep everything in the same um, page here and not have to refresh everything. So uh, let's see, we tried a city, let's try um, an airline. So let's say we want to view all the Delta flights. Oop. You know what? My key up is not working, which might mean that we didn't add it. Let's go take a look at that. Um, get here. Okay, sure enough. Um, there is one more event we can add here. Uh, on the input, it, it's really nice for your user if they can just hit enter and have the same functionality that they have if they're submitting. So we can take um, this right here and just put it equal to key up that enter. This basically just says what it looks like. Um, pay, it has a listener, you know, listen to when a key goes up, but only the enter key. And when that enter key um, has been pressed and comes back up, then, um, you know, call, call this function and pass in the keyword value. And you'll notice, you know, we're accessing that same local variable on on the same element. You can access it here, and you can also access it on a different element. But it's always going to refer back to that input. Okay, so now that we have that, let's give that a try. Let me put in delta, hit enter, and there you go. Okay, um, I can put in uh, what? Oh, oh, no, that's correct. Okay. Um, I can put in the status and say, I wanna see just the ones that are delayed. Um, it'll show me all the delayed flights and you'll notice we're back to having you know, American and, uh, and Delta both. And I can also check flight numbers. So let's say we wanna look at flights that have 50 cause you pretty sure you remember the flight number sort of, but you're not sure. <laughs> and so we go and we look and all the ones with 50 and them come back. Okay, so we've got some you know, really flexible ways to search all of this data. Okay, the very last things that we're going to do, but not without committing. Let me just make sure. Uh, we've got yes, yes, and yes. Okay, so let's make a commit. I'm going to bring up my terminal again, and <laughs> it looks a little crazy. I do realize. Bring it down. Okay. Um, all right, let's do a get status. See what we got. And it's as expected, we only made changes to the app component this time around. Um, get add dot, get status, make sure they're staged. 
And then um, we will do git commit dash M and I'm gonna say um, added filter and reset functionality. Um, yeah, that's actually good. That, that kind of encompasses everything. Okay, we kind of did all of that in one commit. Okay, that's actually one of the reasons it's good to kind of stop and commit because you can you know encapsulate uh, specific features that you added. Um, and if you're in a really, really big project, uh, you, you wouldn't even have like features within one commit, you'd more likely have um, features like on different branches. Um, but uh, this is a small project. So it's, it's enough just to have commits. Okay. Very last thing is we're going to do a little um, styling to um, make this even more useful. The first thing is to um, go over and see what we can do with the flight class. Um, I've got some, yeah, so a little more code for you here. It looks similar to what we did before. We're just going to take it and copy it and then we'll uncomment it when we get it over to the flight class. Um, flights, flights, flights. <laughs> oh, I'm not even up past assets yet. There we go. Okay. Um, Yes, to do add methods. Let's do it. And I don't know why it always says that, but it does. And so, all right. We have is canceled, uh, is delayed, and get image. Um, so one of the fancy things that we can do is to control um, the color of uh, the status so that it kind of gives us a more visual cue of what's on time what's on, delayed and what's canceled. And naturally on time will be green and um, delayed will be yellow and canceled will be red. And we can see that over in the styles file if you go all the way to the bottom. Um, yeah, on time's green, delayed is yellow, canceled is red. So we just have to um, add these things. And what we'll do is we'll default all of them to be green and only change them if, if one of them says delayed or canceled. So we'll go to um, our board component and actually uh, add the on time as the default here. So it'll always have the, that class. But what we can also do is use that um, style uh, attribute directive to say class dot delayed and um, set that equal to I want to make sure I get it right. So let's let's go back and look at that. Um, yeah. So we'll just um, call is canceled. And keep in mind, this is on the flight class, right? So what that means is that we need to call the method on this flight object that we've got here. Um, so that on each one, it'll go and it'll check based on, um, it grabs it from the class. So we can just say um, is delayed and um, it'll just check. But I just said what we needed to do and then I ignored what I said. So <laughs> flight dot is delayed. Um, and then, excuse me. And then we'll do the same thing for, copy it. Same thing for canceled and then say is canceled. Okay, uh, let's just go see if that worked or if I screwed it up. Hey, it worked. Okay, so just to recap, these uh, special directives make it conditional. Um, it allows you to say, I only want this class if this is comes back true. And because is delayed and is canceled, um, just return the, the what this evaluates to. It's going to evaluate to either true or false. So either the status of this object is canceled or it's not. And same thing here. It's either um, delayed or it's not. Um, and then that the value returns that true or false. And then we see um, the result because it'll apply whichever class. And then of course, they've, if they're both false, it just stays with the default on time. So uh, that works there. Um, let's do something else. We had, you'll notice we had this uh, get image here. Um, and what this is going to do is allow us to do, be fancy. And not only are we going to um, 
have our airline names, we will change them out from text to their logos, which are already preloaded for you in um, the assets uh, images folder. So you can see right there, there's the American airline logo, Delta and United. So we're gonna take those little things and um, make them show up. And I think, oh yeah, here we go. Okay, so we need to um, just basically change this and say, I'm gonna go, I wanna make sure I get this right. So give me just a second to pull this up in my solution. Um, yeah, so instead of adding text right there with the string interpolation, we are gonna just add the image and you'll do it with a classic image tag. But here's what's important. You wanna use um, this bracket style of binding to make sure it knows that you're trying to use uh, JavaScript slash TypeScript. Okay, um, and images can be self-closing. The other thing we wanna do though, we wanna control the width of the image so that when the page loads, it's already constraining it. So it doesn't like jump from big to small. So we can actually just say width equals 100 right here. And I think probably it's better to say 100 pixels in quotes. Um, yeah. And so that way it'll show up for, uh, at 100 pixels we begin with. Um, okay, let's see what we got. And there they are. We've got all of our little logos. Doesn't that look nice? Um, so the last thing I think is that we want to be a little bit more specific about um, these uh, city and time kind of headers up here. Because with arrivals, I mean, we already know that with arrivals, we're actually looking at, you know, what was the origin and what's the arrival time, right? And with departures, what was the what is the destination and what is the departure time? So we can make that conditional. Um, we have already learned uh, pretty much everything we need because we've done this before. So I'm going to come back over here to the board component and up here, I'm going to replace city with a ternary expression that's using string interpolation. Um, that's, you know, Angular's special syntax. And I'm just going to ask, is the type arrival or, or not? If it is, use origin. And if it isn't, use destination. And then we'll do the same thing with the time. I will copy and paste again. There you go. And we're, we'll ask the same question. Is this an arrival? If so, use the word arrival. If not, use the word departure. Um, and now we see that on our arrivals tab, we have origin and arrival time. And then we have destination and departure. Um, so that makes, you know, kind of helps even more like give visual clues as to exactly what you're looking at since otherwise things look very, very similar, right? Um, and you experience this when you go to the airport and you stare up at those boards. And if you don't find the word arrivals or departure somewhere, you really <laughs> don't always know what you're looking at. Okay, so uh, let's see. I wanna make sure this is everything I think that it is. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this is helpful for your assignment.